Hello everybody and welcome back. We got a pretty special project today and we're in a pretty special place. Welcome to the Orlando Fire Department's Randall Tootin Fire Museum. You know I had to do that, right? So our project today is gonna to be some parts for this. 1926 American La France fire truck. This truck has a straight six cylinder engine in it. So there's two cylinders, two cylinders, two cylinders. Exhaust valves are on this side. So one, two, three, four, five, six exhaust valves. The intake is on the opposite side. Super simple engine. It's an all babbitted engine. It produces, I believe, somewhere around 100 horsepower. What we have to do is make this gasket right here. When the truck was restored, I had to take the exhaust off, but the gaskets were, one of them was a copper clad gasket, which appears to be correct. And there was another one that was just a fiber type gasket. And I don't know who, who did this. The gasket was just, it was roached. So the project for today is going to be to make four of these gaskets. And thanks to Modern Editing, a really, really good producer, and the uh, mystery of computers, and I'm in my shop. That's pretty cool. I wonder if I could be with a bunch of scantily clad bikini ladies. How about the Smoky Mountains? All right, so let's get to this project. So this is the gasket that came off there. This is the copper clad one. It had some fibrous type material inside of it and some of the fibers missing. So it won't keep its thickness all the way around very well. What we're gonna make it out of came from McMaster Car. So this is 110 copper. It's an eighth inch thick. It came with a certificate of test that shows that it's pure copper and it's tensile strength and whatnot. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna make this gasket, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna make four of these. I wanna have some spares uh, in case I need them. We're gonna use this to as a pattern to make this part. And what I plan on doing here is just using a little Dicom layout die. Now, this copper is so nice and clean. You know, most of the stuff I get to use is second, third, fourth hand. Uh, so it's, it's beat up and scarred. And um, this Dicom will make it nice. The way I'm gonna start off doing this here just put me a little indexing mark right here, down here, another little indexing mark. So I'm going to put a line down here. This is my Randy Richard and the Scott Shop Scribe. This was a gift from Randy. He made it for me. I made a for a bunch of YouTubers. Thank you, Randy. I still use it all the time. Sits right next to me on my workbench. So I've got a line here. Now, the trouble with the line is you have to have the light kind of right to see where that line is when we're gonna cut this. So what I'm gonna do is put some layout die on here. For those of you that are machinists, you know what Dicom is. For those of you that watch the channel that are not machinists, this is a marking die. Machinists use it a lot for layout. You use it on sheet metal, machining parts in the lathe or the mill. It helps the scribe line show up. We're gonna put it on there, it'll dry in a minute, and then we'll remark that line. The only reason I put that line there is so I knew where to put the dicum. Um, I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna use this edge to make the other two. Now, there's a reason I'm doing that because this is a machined sheared edge. So it gives me two machined edges to start from. These are gaskets, these are not cylinder heads or something that we have to be extremely precise on. However, I like to get as close as we can without you know, spending half a day trying to get it within a, you know, a tenth because it really doesn't make that big of a deal on this particular project. So we'll put a little layout die on there and we'll spread it around. This stuff, can, you can buy this from McMaster Car or any of the supply houses for metalworking and machining. They have it in a uh, aerosol can too. I like the original little blue Dicom. They make it in red, works good. So let's see this side over here now. What we'll do is come back over here, and lay this part back on here. Now that line shows up amazing. 
Take the old trusty antique brown and sharp straight edge. Now we have a nice line we can follow. Oh, there's a cat. So we need to transfer these holes through here. Now we could always do the circular pen, get it kind of close thing. I prefer not to do that. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna line this up exactly where we want it. And then we're gonna clamp it down so that it doesn't jiggle and wiggle. We're gonna use something called a transfer punch. Transfer punch, the punch comes in a set. I have several sets and it's exactly the size of the hole the punch is. We are going to use the inappropriate hammer that uh, my kids left out in the weather, but it happens to be on the workbench, so it'll work. A couple of light taps there to mark the exact spot for the center of the hole. The question comes, how do you cut the big hole in the middle and get it there? I am gonna mark this this is just to give me an idea about roughly where the hole should be. Now on here, we have four holes that we've transferred through. We can see the approximate area of the, the center hole. What I'm going to do is take my straight edge and go corner to corner. Because this is a square flange. We're going to scribe that. Do the same thing this way. And we're going to scribe this. Now we have right where the center of that hole should be. So I've got a prick punch, and that is not in reference to the guy holding the hammer. It uh, basically has a much steeper grind on it than a standard center punch will. And I'm going to find the center of that hole. I can drag the, the, that fine point along and I can feel it where the, the center bribe marks meet. I'm gonna put a center punch right there. All right, so we're over here on my duo bandsaw. We have a clear line where we need to cut. We'll still have two square sides on each one of these pieces, you know, factory cut square sides to work with. And we're gonna get, hopefully get this thing pretty doggone close when we're done. All right, we're over here at the drill press and we're gonna burn some holes in here on our lined up punch marks. Again, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but we wanna get as close as we can. This is a 29 64ths. Just slightly over 3 8 Gives me a little bit of wiggle room. Perfecto! And that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, so we are over at the drill press right now. And we sent, we put a center mark here when we were setting up. So we know right where the center of this, and we can put the pilot bit on this hole saw right there on that center hole. Alrighty then. Anybody want some uh, copper wool? Hot like your best friend's mom. So, oh my goodness, we are getting there. It's starting to look like a gasket. This is a Ellis belt grinder. So it's a belt driven machine, but it acts like a grinder. Uh, I have a 3M belt on here. This was a pretty aggressive belt, like an 80 grit. For this copper, it's gonna be plenty aggressive. So we're just gonna grind a profile down there, then we'll come in with a, a hand file and file the corners out. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're going to anneal these. We're gonna heat them up to a glowing red, just drop them in this bucket of water. When you do that, it'll soften that copper a little bit more and allow it to uh, compress when we tighten everything down. And when it's soft like that and you compress it, it'll form like a little, a little gasket type seal there. Copper melts at a very, very high temperature. So we gotta put a lot of heat into this to get it hot enough. One eternity later. Well, that got hot fast. Ooh, doggy, she hot. Here we go, ready, one, two, three. And there we go. Now you can see the oxides formed on it from the heat. We'll take a little brush here in a minute. We'll clean it all up. But now, oh yeah, <laughs> copper is very soft now. All right, so we've got our gaskets all ready to rock and roll. 
and uh, we're ready to go put them back on the fire truck. So I guess it's time to lean on a little bit of Hollywood magic and go. Never fails. Well, everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this quick tour of the Orlando Fire Museum and getting to watch me fabricate a couple of quick parts for this 1926 American La France fire truck, one of the jewels in the crown of the Orlando Fire Museum. So here's a little shot of the completed repair. Sorry, I didn't get any video of actually putting it back together, but not exactly what I would call a fun job by yourself. If you're ever planning a vacation to come to the Mouse House, to Universal Studios, the Space Coast, to go to the beaches, to Daytona, be sure to plan a little side trip to this little hidden gem, the Orlando Fire Museum. It's well worth the trip. Everyone, again, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. And we'll see you real soon.